Welcome to Perfect Python, the series where I teach you how to take your code to the next level, perfection. In the last few videos, I've showed you how to improve the actual coding standard of your project. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you something a little bit different, and I'm gonna be showing you how to improve the security and the safety of your project. This is done through two entirely command line interface based tools that check the security of your own code as well as the security of other people's code. So if there are any security issues out there, then you are alerted and you're then able to fix them. If your code is publicly accessible, and then it's imperative that your code is actually secure in the law 4j you know all that stuff I mean, we all know what happened with that and we don't want that happening again if we can help it so code security and safety big tick if you like the video then consider like it something you know and maybe hit that subscribe button as well if you really liked it uh, if there's anything in particular that you want to see me do whether it's in the perfect python series or just in general do let me know in the comments i read them all and uh, i'll see what i can do but yeah with that let's get into it so this video is going to work a little bit differently. In previous videos in this series, we've talked about one tool at a time. However, in this video, we're going to actually be talking about two because they do pretty much the same thing. So the first tool we're going to be talking about is Bandit, which checks for security errors in your code. And a second is a tool called Safety, which checks for security errors in other people's code. So if we load the terminal, we can do pip install bandit uh, safety. And I already have them all installed, but uh, they will install you know a decent amount of things. Again, it's it's development. It doesn't matter so much about dependencies. And we're not really going to be doing any coding in this video. It's not really any program we need to do. The only coding I'm going to do is actually creating examples of insecure code to show you how to how to well how bandit actually works the tools themselves work entirely in the command line interface so this is one you can just sit relax and watch and you can just implement this on your own code and see if there's anything wrong so we're going to do two examples of things that bandit will pick up these are the only two things i've ever actually triggered i'm sure there are plenty more uh, but these are the only two things i know for sure will work so we could do token equals and just any old random string and then temp deer equals slash tmp. Uh, so the first one is an obvious problem, hard-coded passwords slash tokens, always a security problem. Um, you know, this should be common knowledge, but some people still put raw tokens in their code. There are some you know, resources out there that still recommend doing this. That is really, really, really never, ever, ever a good idea. You always want to put it in a separate file and load it in. Cannot stress that enough. The second thing I wasn't actually aware of until Bandit picked it up. There are some security problems with manually working with files in the temp directory. I do not remember exactly what the problem is, but I know it is a security issue. So if we were to do bandit uh, security.py, it would find these two things. So it ranks them by severity and by confidence as well. So the first one here is our hard-coded password. Severity is low, weirdly enough, but maybe I guess because it's a possible hard-coded password. Essentially how it picks this one up is if, if your variable name has token or oh, it's not like page token if you're working with the, with the Google API perhaps, then it will think, oh, maybe this is a hard-coded password. And it has a confidence of medium, so it's, it's kind of sure, but it's not really too sure. And uh, a severity of low, which means it's not really a huge deal, which is weird. I would have thought that would have been higher than that, but never mind. And then you've got down here uh, your hard coded temp directory, possible insecure usage of temp file directory, severity medium this time, and also confidence medium. So you can actually filter things by severity and by confidence. So you can only have things that are high severity be reported to you, and you can only have things have high confidence reported to you, for example. The reason for this is that you can actually tell Bandit to only report things of a certain severity or of a certain confidence. So what you can do is you can do Bandit, not bad blocks, Bandit, not that either, Bandit, there we go, uh, security.py, you could do dash L for low, LL for medium, and LLL for high, and this is the severity one. So if we run this, it doesn't actually look any different down here, but you notice that it's not actually reported any issues up here. So that's all it changes. It doesn't actually change the metrics. It just changes what it reports to you. And for the confidence, it's the same, but with eyes for some bizarre reason. So there are a few more options that I want to go over. There are a lot in total, but there's only two more that I want to go over because I feel as though they're the only ones that are super important, at least as far as I can tell, which is the dash R. So if you want to check an entire directory, you have to use dash R. That's just kind of how it works. Uh, I think fairly non-standard for tools like this, but 
you know, that's just how it is for this. And the other one is dash S. So you can actually, in the same way as you can filter by severity and confidence, you can actually tell Bandit that something is okay. So for example, if you don't, uh, if you know for a fact that this isn't actually a problem, you can do no sec B105, which is the hard coded password uh, code as we found out, where is it? Up here. So this uh, B105 hard coded password string. If we pass in uh, no sec B105 and then we run just a normal security.py, it actually gets rid of it from the metrics completely because it now no longer identifies it as a problem at all. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to say, uh, you know, tell Bandit that hard coded temporary directories are okay wherever, we don't mind about these things. We could do bandit security.py dash s b one o eight, and that does the same as this comment, except it does it throughout the entire uh, program that it checks, not just one line. So we can run that, and now you know everything's fine, and our test passes. Amazing. So the other thing I want to talk about is safety. The safety works slightly differently in the fact that there's not really any examples that I can show you at all. It's just a program that does pretty much one thing, but what it does is it checks for security issues registered in, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's like CVE numbers. Um, so it's this, yeah, it's a CVE, it might actually just be called CVE, but basically these are like security records. So whenever there's, you know, a security problem in something that's particularly well known, it goes on here, it becomes, you know, a known problem. And essentially, uh, safety has a database of all of these things in uh, libraries on the Python package index and if it finds something that's a problem it will let you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install uh, version NumPy uh, before it was patched. So there was a security issue that was patched in version 1.22.2 so we're going to install 1.22.1 and this has this issue in it that safety can then pick up on. So if you do safety check, it will look through, you can see it's checked 37 packages. This is including all the dependencies from, from previous videos as well. But as you can see, it's found uh, NumPy installed 1.21.1, affected less than 1.22.2, and the ID is 44715. This isn't the CVE ID. Safety is built by pyup.io. And this is the ID in their database. As far as I can tell, there's no easy way to find this information on their website. You have to do it through some weird JSON thing. What you can do if you want to see more details is you could do full report. And what this will do is it will actually give you some information of the issues. You can see fixed for CVE 2021 uh, 41495. So this is a CVE ID. It was basically some null pointer dereference thing that allowed you to to perform DOS attacks if there was no memory left using negative numbers or something really, really specific as far as I can tell. But safety has identified this problem and now you are aware of it. So what you can either do is you can make sure that you've locked your versions to unaffected versions. Or if you're either fine with this issue being a thing or if you fix the issue and safety is still telling you about it because you know, you're know you using the free DB, which is updated once a month. So for example, the, uh, this NumPy error was still appearing for versions that weren't affected. What you can do is use the dash I flag. So if you just bring this back up, we can have the full report. And if we say dash I 44715, we run this again. It won't uh, let us know of that security vulnerability the test will pass because we've told safety uh, this ID is fine. We either don't care about it or we've updated it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's not much to talk about with safety because there's not a whole lot of options as far as I can tell, but that full report thing is quite useful. Uh, so it might be worth sticking that on if there are any problems. But yeah, that is how you can check for security vulnerabilities in your code. Again, not a particularly interactive video because everything is just kind of handled for you, but these are things that you can deploy on your code straight away and you can check for errors. It's just really useful. It helps you from, you know, if you've got like a token in your code for debugging, then Bandit will essentially remind you to remove it. 
before uploading it to GitHub or anything, which has its own uh, safety uh, protocols in place to you know regenerate tokens and stuff like that. But this kind of allows you to not have to worry about that at all. If you like the video, then consider leaving a like to let me know and leave a comment below if you have any questions. On top of that, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this or become a member if you really enjoy the content. With that in mind, I would like to thank my amazing members and patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where we talk about some more Discord bots. It's a Discord bot uh, sort of week coming up for you. Uh, so I'll see you for that.